Hi, my name is Inga Detloff and I'd like to share some ideas about the topic Moodle course layout with you. Moodle has many possibilities and functions and in my experience several Moodle newcomers are quite overwhelmed. When I say overwhelmed I mean the teachers, students get along very well normally. In this presentation I'll try to give some sort of overview of aspects which are relevant when you design a course, some kind of checklist how to proceed. Yeah, didactic parameters. First of all, you have to think about the didactical setting, what you want to achieve with a Moodle course. It's a completely different thing whether a lecturer just wants to enrich his class with maybe even optional files and literature, or if he creates a blended learning environment, or if the Moodle course shall be a component of an online master's degree. E-learning is also kind of subject specific. Some subjects of study rely on discussion, some rely on learning facts and some rely on experiments. It's a long list. Um, I won't read the text to you as you can read it by yourself, but I'll try to add some sort of commentary to it. Keep it simple. Most default configuration options will suit your needs. In so far, don't click too much in the settings. It will be difficult to get help later when you altered configuration options which created problems in the course. Nowadays it is even possible for a teacher to kick oneself out of course by just clicking once on the hide option in the enrollment menu. Why am I telling that? I don't want to discourage you but mistakes are natural, you wouldn't be the first and in most cases they can be corrected. Start simple, you don't have to put every kind of Moodle learning activity you know in your course. Why don't you just start with a consistent structure? Maybe one section for information, one for discussion and topic sections which describe the learning goals. Many teachers use the switch role to student option regularly in order to see what the students see and what they can click on. You don't have to memorize for all learning activities who has got which rights. Just use the switch function. Moodle has a role system which is specifi specified by the technical administrators of the Moodle platform. They also can add plugins, etc. and therefore each Moodle installation is at least a little bit different. Which basic layout decisions? When you click on add a new course, you get an empty Moodle course with a certain structure. Most important for you is a button Turn Editing On to make changes in the course to add material and activities. The icons in Moodle have a certain meaning and you'll soon recognize the functions via the icons. Another very important menu is Administration, Course Administration, Edit Settings. You will have to go there and make changes regarding number of sections, name of the course, weekly or topics format. Unfortunately, the setting for the course enrollment key, which has been here for years in Moodle 1.9, with Moodle 2 was dumped, um, I mean hidden, deep in the system. You can get there only by clicking on Users, Enrollment Methods, Self-Enrollment Student. There are many reasons that the, that the enrollment key is very important for us, among them data protection and copyright issues. With Moodle 2, when the enrollment key is active on your Moodle site, the system generates a random enrollment key which you have to change afterwards. Yeah, which learning activities? You are free to experiment in your Moodle course, but in most cases you will simply be interested that what you intended is really working, so start simple. Wikis are nice, but most teachers and students don't know how to use them in Moodle and if you want to add collaboration activities, just use forums or glossaries. The database activity is only nice to use if someone has already created the technique, I mean the template, around it. I really like the choice activity. Just try it, you won't regret it. Yeah, how to help mobile users. 
Many teachers may already use a smartphone, but they aren't aware that you could use Moodle via a smartphone and that students do exactly that. In my opinion, the navigation dock was a great improvement in Moodle 2. Everyone can put all or some side blocks in the dock in order to reduce the elements and maybe only see the middle part of the Moodle course. That's also a thing many teachers aren't aware of and which I mentioned in my training courses. Um, a big change in Moodle 2.5 comes with Bootstrap. That means that Moodle design themes may get responsive design. That means that you don't have to do anything, but that Moodle users with mobile devices will see the course differently. I didn't mention the several mobile apps which have been on the market for years. Some need changes on the server, you have to pay for some, and others have only a few functions. The new official Moodle app called Moodle Mobile um, is the one with a white letter M on an orange background. It's for free. The Moodle administrator has to enable web services and then you can use it. It hasn't many functions yet and refers to the original Moodle site in most cases. So it's still necessary that the Moodle site administrator thinks about activating the Moodle theme My Mobile or thinks about using a design theme with responsive web design for the whole platform. Changes from 2.4 to 2.5 Yeah, um, badges are a very interesting thing. They are also one of the educational trends mentioned in the current Horizon report, Higher Education. In this Moodle MOOC I've seen them in action for the very first time and I'm still not sure if they are a hype or something we will be used to in some years. In Moodle 2.5, the long, and I mean long and complicated, Moodle setting forms got a revision. Now they collapse. That looks nice and may make it very easy for help desks to help people. At the moment I can't say much about the changes Regarding the learning activities, um, at first glance they seem small, but that's what the Moodle release notes are for. I'll have a look at that. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. For actual use I recommend the PDF file with the slides which you find on my blog.